I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. This is a video in my Black Box 101 series, where I teach you how to tune and troubleshoot your copter using Black Box. Uh, this is a playlist, and if you haven't seen the earlier videos in the playlist, you should definitely check them out. In those earlier videos, I show you how to use Black Box, how to set it up, and how to do basic analysis of what the PIDs and the gyro are doing. Now that that stuff is out of the way, what I'm going to be focusing on is specific interesting problems that I think are educational, or just things that you might want to do. And in this one, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out which axis prop wash is happening on. Now this is a part of my video where I would normally play my intro graphic for you with my little theme song, but I'm not going to do that because I really, I just want to get this video out. There's so much production and editing and cameras and lights and nonsense. It takes me forever to get videos out to these days, and I just want to, I want to, I'm actually, the real answer is I just want to answer this question for myself, to tune this copter for myself, but as long as I'm going to do it, I'm going to make a video for you, but I just don't want to go through all that nonsense just to find out which of these, which of the, my PIDs I need to change. So come along with me as we discover the answer to this question. And the first thing I'll do is I will press the H key to look at the header information. This is a log header information. Some of this stuff is not correct because the black box explorer that I'm using has not been up to date for Betaflight 3.2 yet. It will be soon when 3.2, you know, sometime between now and when 3.2 becomes official. But for example, you'll see here it says legacy PID controller instead of Betaflight. That is clearly not correct. And we've also got some issues here. <laughs> like zero, no, you know, This is all clearly not right. But what I do want to show you is the PIDs and these are correct. And I've worked the PIDs up as I describe in my PID tuning masterclass, basically raising P to make the copter feel sharper uh, and raising D to get rid of prop wash oscillation while monitoring for hot motors. Now I've pretty much got things where I want. And if I show you the copter flying, let's just watch the copter fly for a few minutes. It's a little dark in the video, but uh, you'll see, I think, what you need. It's flying okay. Right, no bounce back or anything. So the tune is pretty good, but there's just the tiniest little bit of prop wash oscillation still in there. So if we listen right there, there was some. And you can see it in the motors and you can hear it in the audio as well. And so I want to get rid of that. And I need it means I need to raise D gain or lower P gain. But I'm so close, and normally I just raise and lower those together, right? I just sort of take a guess at, whoops, there we go. I just sort of take a guess at where they need to be relative to each other. So here you can see I've got P higher than, uh, pitch higher than roll, which is how this, this uh, style of frame usually is. Uh, and uh, with D, I don't have it that way. I've just kind of guessed at these numbers and raised and lowered them together to try and dial in the prop wash uh, pretty well. But now I want to fine tune it. And in order to fine tune it, I need to know whether I need to raise P or uh, on, on pitch or on roll. And the way I'm going to figure that out is I'm going to go into the graph setup and I'm going to add a graph. And I'm just going to look at the P term on the three axes. So I don't really care about D. I want to see where that P term oscillation, prop wash oscillation is P term oscillation. And I want to see which axis that's happening on. So let's go back, there it is, and let's look. Which axis is that happening on? Now there's some interaction here. Obviously the, the axes are interrelated. As one axis starts to oscillate, the other axis will feel it. But which axis is that primarily happening on? Remember, we are looking for sinusoidal style smooth oscillation, uh, and it looks to me like that is happening on the roll axis right here. We can see right here, the sinusoidal p-term oscillation starts to come out. Uh, it's really not happening on yaw. There's not really any, any sinusoidal oscillation, nor on pitch, but mostly on roll. So that indicates that the roll axis is where the prop wash oscillation is happening, at least in this case. We can't just stop on one, though. There's another one. I happen to know where it is. Hold on. There. And again, you can see the motors doing their little... Uh, angry Pac-Man, they call them sometimes, because it kind of looks like a Pac-Man opening and closing his mouth. Although the motors aren't at very high. You can't, it's not a Pac-Man here. I guess this will be the Pac-Man right here. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, there's the oscillation. 
Yep. And which axis was oscillating. And here it looks to me like it's more happening on the pitch axis, the blue line, than on the roll axis. We see these kind of, not exactly sinusoidal, but uh, yeah, it looks more regular and oscillating on the pitch axis than on the roll axis. So now that's one for one. And, and that's, that's normal. That's fine. Just different flight characteristics, different things happening to the quad, different axes oscillate. Let's see if we can find another example. Now you notice right there, as I raised the throttle as I was falling, there wasn't prop wash oscillation. That's a sign to me, that's a place where prop wash oscillation would be likely to occur, and it's a sign to me that the quad is pretty well tuned. Nothing. Clean as a whistle. I love it. There we go. More prop wash oscillation. You can hear it very clearly and see it right there. Yeah, that really looks like both axes almost. It's definitely, it's hard to pick one. So, let's just say both. A little bit there. Just the tiniest bit there. It looks like it happened on roll. And I just hear, I just heard that, so I picked that up. There's a clear one. You can hear it and see it in the motors. And definitely happening on roll more so than pitch here although you can see it's also happening a little on pitch but these clear sinusoidal regular peaks are happening on roll okay so i would say we seem to have more of an issue on roll than on pitch but a little bit on pitch as well and then what i need to do is i need to either decrease p term on roll or increase d term on roll one or the other. It's really surprising that we would need more D gain on roll than pitch uh, on this quad because uh, the way the weight distribution is, you would normally it's a, it's a stand it's a QAVR so it's a standard H style frame, and generally the weight distribution is more centralized along the roll axis than the pitch axis. So normally you would expect to need higher P and D gains on the pitch axis, but we can certainly see that we, we seem to be getting more prop wash oscillation on the roll than the pitch axis. Which of those two things am I going to do? That's a tough one. Uh, the motors aren't hot yet. Betaflight 3.2 uh, dynamic filter is doing its job. But if we actually look, is that really a topic for another video? If you actually look at the, let's see. Oh, that's fine. Let me, this is the roll axis, P, I, and D. And if I zoom all the way out by pressing the Z key and turn off smoothing by pressing the S key, that yellow line is the D term. And holy cripes. Now, if you were to show me this trace, I would say that is a mess and a half. You'd be worried you were going to burn up your motors and yada, yada, yada. But you saw it. It's flying smooth and the motors are coming down cool. And this, by the way, as a side note, is why I don't do as much black box log analysis for PID tuning as I used to. Because if you, you, this looks terrible, but it's not. So I, I don't know. But I am hesitant to turn up the D gain with a D term that freaking active. I am a little bit worried. I don't quite fully trust the magic of the Betaflight dynamic filter to protect me. If I break a prop, for example, I don't want to smoke a motor. So I might be willing to bump D up just a little bit, like five points, maybe drop P down just a couple points. And then on the pitch axis, it, we did see a little bit there, maybe, maybe the same thing. Maybe, maybe we'll do this, see how that works, you know? Anyway, that's the direction that I would go. So to sum up, uh, tune your prop wash by just, heck, just set your P, your, your, your pitch and your roll axis the same, or if you've got an H quad or, or a uh, stretch X quad, if it's more the weight is more centralized on the roll than the pitch, basically anything but a pure X, maybe set your pitch, uh, you know, a little bit higher than your roll. Just rough those in and raise and lower them until you get the prop wash mostly under control. And then in order to differentiate the roll and the pitch axis, then go to your black box and look for which one is having the oscillation and tune that one next. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, just like the old days, right? <laughs> I always, I, I, just one big long video of me talking over black box. And uh, yeah, don't you miss those days? Well, I don't know. 
But you know, one thing that hasn't changed is my sign off ever since the beginning has been happy flying. And I sure do mean it. Happy flying, you guys. Hope you're enjoying your quadcopters. Hope you're having a great time with this great hobby. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.